Hi everyone. I don't know if you can hear, but I have a big smile on my face as usual uh, because you know, this is definitely turning into one of my favourite videos to shoot of the week. Um, I mean, at the moment, it's I'm having a good run. Is basically none of the videos I put out feel like a grind, which is always good. That's how you sort of stop burnout, I think. Um, but the, you know, in particular, th this I just love going through sets and you know seeing what jumps out so this is a great opportunity so you yeah, are up to eternal masters in terms of looking back through these aggregate compilation sets whatever you want to call them and uh, I, yeah remember when this came out was it 2016 this one i didn't play online um so i have no i don't know <laughs> nothing to to contribute in terms of um what it was like to play in um you know in in limited uh in you know what it was like to draft sorry or any any not even anything to contribute but just any memories of um doing that because i didn't do it i don't well i don't think i did um so yeah I'm just going to scroll through and, and as I do, as we get a, just a feel for the general artwork aesthetics um, and, you know, card layout and the sort of things that were in here, that sort of thing. Um, I'll just talk a bit about the set and burble on around the, the general stuff surrounding the set. So in, intended for legacy commander and vintage formats it's one of these ways of of getting cards into the card pool into the secondary market um, but at the same time you know trying to create a set i suppose that you could at the very least draft um, so yeah you've got sought after cards from throughout magic's history without contravening the reserve list at that point um, so quite a lot of eternal staples that were able to fall into that category. But mixed in there with some you know, modern specific card, or modern legal cards, should I say, um, to make the archetypes that are in here work, work because they've got archetypes for drafting. Well, Braids is in here, okay. Um... So, yeah, what else can I say about this before we get on to the real meat and potatoes of this? Um, yeah, exclusively booster base, no satellite products, so no pre-cons branded with the set. Each booster has 15 playable cards. So with these, there's a bit of a recur recurring, recurring theme on how these, these broke down. So you've got 10 commons, 3 uncommons. A rare or a mythic but then the slot where there would normally be the basic land they did something a bit special so with this one it's one full card of any rarity replacing the basic lands that would normally be found in in a booster so no runner basic land sadly so thumbs down for that and the 16th card is a marketing card and yeah as anybody that remembers buying it at the time uh yeah quite a higher um price <laughs> on the car on the on the boosters something that i haven't really mentioned with these uh another one where there was only 24 packs in the in the booster box if you if you you know could afford a booster box And there's been some rarity changes in here as well to create better drafting environments and so forth. Um, also, when they shift around with rarities in sets, you know, it's always good for the uh, for players of other formats like, you know, pauper as well. Um, helps helps stuff um, become available to pauper that wasn't previously. 
So that's stuff where, you know, stuff goes from uncommon to common. Nimble mongoose. Now, of course, my big problem with a lot of this is I'm pretty clueless when it comes to things like vintage and legacy. So, um, as I probably mentioned, I didn't or don't think I drafted this at the time, mainly because I have problems <laughs> getting my head round. Um, you know, stuff like what, what's a good archetype to do in that sort of format um, so yeah that didn't help so hourglass shaped expansion symbol and this was released between Modern Masters 2015 and Modern Masters 2017. So I've sort of gone in back in time from last week because I wanted to cover all the regular Modern Masters ones before I got onto the other Masters, like this one. You can see there's some uh, multicolour cards here as well. And as I go through, we'll be chatting about the, um, the different archetypes that were around in here for the colour combinations. I think... Unlike last week, which yeah had a mix of what two color and three color, this is all the main archetypes are all two colors. But again, you know you don't have to stick to that. But we'll probably see, no surprise here, that our non-basic lands, which here we can see we've got a number of common, um, yeah, are ways of fixing for colors we'll see if there's a full 10 here it looks like there might well be yeah which would make sense so yeah so the sorts of things i'm going to be mentioning as i go along as we go through each colors and sort of locking it off explaining the archetypes so far are going to be two colors in both allied and enemy so let's dive in in our usual way look at the going through by color and within color by rarity and then within that, looking at it on a curve and also seeing what, where the multicolored stuff starts to jump out. So at what rarity level. So already in white, first thing, you know, always goes on in my head is, do we have a weenie deck here? Or do we have a weenie deck in any color, but more specifically white? So you're looking, you know, do we have a common, which we are in, you know, Where's our curve creature wise? So we got some one drops, some is it just one two drop creature? No, here we go. This is the rest. And our three drops. So yeah, we have I suspect some sort of white weenie deck, but of course we also need to consider our second colours. Um and there's probably going to be specific strategies, archetypes that we're going to see revolving around two colour stuff. You know, white, blue, white, black, white, red, white, green. And already um, at common, some interesting, you know, ways of dealing with threats. So we've got humble, we've got pacifism. We've got ways of dealing with artifacts or enchantments. There's our token generation actually, so yeah. Another thing that often will point towards a certain, you know, type of weenie deck is do we have cards in whatever colour um, generating tokens for us? And we can see it here. Interesting. Target creature control gains protection. Okay. Oh, we have Squadron Hawk. At common, so yeah, we have a squadron hawk deck, I suppose. Here's a white red card because red's flashback, not in the casting cost, but red in the flashback. 
my seeing what I'm looking for is do we have any life gain here I don't think so do we not as a main strategy at common anyway okay bird rebel soldier always interesting to see what multi creature types they have human monk cleric okay worth getting back enchantments from your graveyard okay I'm just looking to see if there's any equipment things in white here don't see that yet okay so soldiers weenie um there's a few flyers here so there's one at, at common we've made me see some more there's another one there's a squadron hawk and then here so that's five drop squadron hawks what two drop haven rift watcher is a three drop and then pegasus is two so we don't have any one drop flyer um well we got stuff on the curve beyond that i think yeah it was interesting to keep an eye out for okay source to plowshare so more removal so moving on to uncommon and now we're starting to see yep the the two color stuff so it looks like i'm assuming here we may see some there isn't any sort of low casting cost like one casting cost hybrids things and i don't see any hybrid yet so probably here hybrid isn't isn't a thing and also i suppose it when did hybrid first appear so that would be around the time of lawwin i think so yeah it would be it would sort of be wrong for the the vibe of the set i think if they did that maybe okay oh tokens right I wonder what they're going to crop up in mainly. Some counter stuff. Can't really draw all this. War Priest of Thune in here. So yeah, it blows up enchantments, doesn't it? So we've got Zealous Prosecution. So it's interesting to see the, the two colour stuff at Uncommon. The end of turn, creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Creatures your opponents control get minus one, minus one. Armadillo cloaks in here, green white. Enchanted creature plus two plus two and has trample. Whenever an enchanted creature deals damage, you gain that much much life. Messer enchant enchantress is in here, so I wonder if there was an in Yeah, look, we've got these two. I think we might see like an enchantments deck, maybe. Chalcedon. Faith fetters. So lots of support cards here. Mm, red, white. Well, we'll see. I'm curious as to where, like, where will be the two color aggro deck? Is it going to be red, white? Is it going to be red, green? Um, yeah, those sort of things into my mind already. We do have a white, black, a uh, white, black, white, blue flyer. We also have Sierra Angel in white. So things are looking had been looking good already on our curve for flyers in white, but the presence of this makes me, you know, would 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 it would appear that uh, I sus well, I suspect that's uh, I'm trying to think of the best word here. Um, yeah, we've got a what do they call it? Skies deck of some description. Fly blue white flyers. Mm. bounce shrines okay we should keep our eye for shrines then i mean i'm going to go through cycles towards the end but sometimes it's fun as we go along to see what might be here okay now onto the rares both regular rares and mythics and i'll go through the the mythics at the end as well in you know individually oh sorry as a group um so we've got Okay, Tutor and Mother of Runes in here. 
Okay, eight and a half tails. Balance is in here. Unexpectedly absent. Red, white. Sacrifice a land. Put two on one red and white goblin soldier creature tokens. So we've got tokens in red and white already. Vindicates in here. I wonder what a white black deck is. I mean, there's going to be some sort of reanimation deck um, in here. At least one, probably. In, in You know, say at least one, like, you know, across the different colours. So last week we saw, didn't we, there was a, in, in two different pairs there were, or was it in a, yeah, in a pair and then in a tricolour there were two slightly different um, Graveyard Matters decks. Okay, we've got Brago in here, which is a spirit. It's white, blue. I don't know if there's any specific cards in here that form a cycle of draft indicators or not. They didn't seem to do that so much with um, these Masters de um, sets as much as they do with regular sets, I don't think. Okay, Wrath of God. So, not surprisingly, we're seeing our Legends now at the higher rarities. Karmic Guide's in here, Wrath is in here, Sphinx of the Steel Wind, wow. So this is it's three colour, white, blue, black, flying, first strike, vigilance, lifelink, protection from red and from green. <laughs> so as I said, no specific limited archetype for three colours that was, was mentioned, but that doesn't mean to say there isn't one. Um, it's not just the ones, not the ones that were promoted by Wizards at the time. So flashbacks clearly a thing. We've seen a few flashback cards now, and um, we've got some here in blue. This is our, these are our commons at blue. So Dream Twist, Silent Departure, Counterspell. We've got Giant Tortoise, which sort of does this. Um, it's not a defender, but it does this thing where you know you get pumps the. Uh, Toughness. So works well as a blocker. Okay. So counter spell, but to the top of the library. Zombies, auras. Okay. So these interesting, you know, blue auras that. Lockdown creatures, parental combat, and they'll be dealt to and dealt by enchanted creature. So I suppose the blue equivalent of a pacifism, which we saw in white. Okay, glacial walls in here. So I wonder if there is like a a defender-like deck. We've got another wall as well. So I mentioned about, you know, possibly mono white could be some sort of white weenie. You know, is there a blue mono colour thing that's jumping out? Again, look, we've got a number of flyers here. When did our flyers kick in in blue on the curve? See, these are interesting cards, you know, in a, a blue white flyers deck where you you know, you can also gum up the board as well to block, you know, opponents' cards that aren't flyers. So, you know, you have those elements of control um, often coming in from blue in the white-blue skies, white-blue fire deck, whatever you want to call it, that sort of help you while you get your things in the sky so to speak. Yeah, so it looks like most of our lower casting cost flyers are coming from white, which again is not unusual. And so, you know, our counter spell stuff and our gumming up and you know, just basically controlling the board until we get our bigger flyers in the sky um, is is coming from from blue, including uh, a few other things. It's interesting. There's a a mill thing going on here. Let's see if that bounces out at us. I mean, mill T 
two colour would normally be what a blue black thing, but we'll see whether that's the case. It might just be mono blue, mono blue mill. Okay, so we do have a brainstorm at uncommon. So yeah. Some selective counter spell as well. Hydro Blast is in here, which I believe was a mirrored pair. Okay, we do have Trigon Predator. Destroy target artifact to enchantment that player controls. Okay. More flying stuff. Caring about flyers. We've got Prodigal Sorcerer in here. Pinger. We Dragonauts, blue, red, instance or sorceries. And then again, we've seen this already. Fact or fictions in here. So various cards that are going to help us you know, do some sort of manipulation of our hand, albeit with um, some interference with the uh, opponent how you think about it okay here we go wonder extract from darkness each player puts the top two cards of his or her grave of his library into his or graveyard put a creature of a grave and okay so yeah that's <laughs> a real big pointer to reanimator Hoden of the seeing winds shrines again so we got a shrine thing going on okay so sometimes they shove this sort of, you know, five colour magical Christmas land deck in here. And that might possibly be, be it, five colour shrine deck. You can have a go at building. Uh, we do have imprint here as well. Mm. So, interesting set of cards. Right. Rares and Mythics. Okay, Baleful Strix is in here. Flying Death Touch, card draw on ETB, Mystical Tutors. We've got a few tutors already. Um, Serendip Freet, Flyer, Dax in here. Oh, Shardless Agent. Wasn't that from Shard's block? Rego, which we've already seen, control magic, diminishing returns, force of will, future sight, arcanus, lots of really strong cards. Jace is the mind sculptors in here, called the Skybringer. So there is, oh, okay, so there is some uh, hybrid here, then, okay, P possibly not a lot. So that wasn't that from Eventide, yeah, okay, so there are some later cards in here. We've also got some three colour stuff, Maelstrom Wanderer, Sphinx of the Steel Wind. So when we get to the end, no doubt I'll have a look and see, you know, all the stuff above two colours that was kicking around in this. And then we've got Inkwell Leviathan with Shroud. So there's some pretty strong blue creatures. We've got Planeswalkers just generally in, you know, the rares and mythic slots. Okay, so... Where, what does that point as well? So far we've seen white, we've seen blue, yep. Yeah. White, blue skies, white, blue flies, whatever you want to call it. Right, moving on to black. Carrion feeder, duress, innocent blood, tragic slip. So some nice black cards here. We've got some um, mana fixing in the way that black can do it. Uh, this way, paying one life to add green to your mana pool. Another way sometimes you might see is um, filtering in older sets, but uh, yeah, that's one. This is another way. We've got nausea in here, minus one, minus one for all creatures. So, again, card draw in black done this way, losing two life to draw two cards. So, plenty of nice utility across the colors here. For your decks. Oh, here's Eye Blight's ending. So here's your common removal. Do we get anything else? Yeah, there's Tragic Slip, which has Morbid. Okay. 
wake dancer is in here. So I'm seeing morbid already at, at common. Right. So you want stuff dying, basically. <laughs> okay, so I think, you know, that's going to tell you that definitely, uh, yeah, black is teaming up with something um, to, to work with the, the graveyard, probably in several colour combinations, either throughout and out morbid or just generally reanimator and just you get a nice, you know, morbid side effect or, you know, some sort of recursion and EDB business. Because we have Grave Digger here. Okay. Do I see a... I don't really see a common... A white... A, sorry, a black weenie deck. Not really. Lots of cool utility. And lots of graveyard stuff. But, yeah. Not really getting it from that. Oh, Animate Dead's in. Okay. We've got him to Torak. Right, so we do have discard, and you can target yourself with this if you feel so inclined. <laughs> um, Zealous persecution, which we've already seen. Okay, I don't really think I see a. I don't know if I see an elves deck here. Not sure. Might be. I suppose we won't really find out where we till we get to green. Did I let me just go back. Did that register? Just looking to see what we've got. Well we do have yeah, actually I didn't really spot that too well. So yeah, we've got some elves at common. So Alright. Shame into the p overview. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I think we know already. Oh, well, we'll, we'll, when we get to green, we'll confirm it. We've got victimize in here. Oh, necrotiles in here. Excellent. Bit of removal. There's a another shrine. We do have annihilate as well. Extract from darkness, which we've already seen because we looked at the blue cards. Oh, yes. Havoc demon. Right. So already we're seeing lots of nice removal and other things in other utility in black. Okay. So it's uncommon so now oh it's a death right shaman. Right. <laughs> yep. So yeah, we are seeing a few um hybrid cars here or band in modern, modern band in legacy well there you go we give it to you and then we'll take it away but it, well it is legal in vintage so so i suppose you're okay there we've already seen both full strips into wow well, yeah there's loads of classic Reanimation graveyard stuff here, so excellent. And then we've got toxic deluge, more morbid sinkhole. You get to blow up a target land for two black. When did sinkhole first come in? <laughs> Banned in pauper, it must have been. Pr was it? Was it printed? It must have been printed at yeah. So originally, well, that's funny. Yeah, of course, all the way back to limited um, in that era, and it's uh, it's a common. Okay, yeah, I can see why. Necropotence, toxic, praise is in here. That's banned in commander. Okay, grid void. Oh, wow, vindicate. Yeah, so if anybody drafted this at the time, either in paper or um, online, let me know how much fun, you know, whether you had fun or not. 
Um, oh, we're in red, face this leading. So let's just lock off here. So what do we got? We already, white, blue, we already know about, which was the skies one. So blue, black, yeah, reanimator figures from what we've seen. It was an extract from darkness there and various other cards. In terms of the black, white, um, it's it's basically tagged up as recursion with Enter the Battlefield effects. Grave Digger being a key card there. So, yeah. So that's what we've got so far for you. Let's move on. So, yeah, Faithless Looting. Oh, loads of cool common cards here. Firebolt, Curd Ape, Mog Fanatic. So this is your red-green deck dare I say, aggro, um, reckless charge, borderland marauder, desperate ravings, that's red, red blue with flashback. Yeah, red blue is going to be, we know pretty much with what, what we see set on set that if there's red blue there, it's going to be some sort of spells matter type deck, but there'll, there'll be a, probably a twist on this because of the, the whole flashback thing. Um, there's probably quite an interesting what blue, blue, black, blue, black, green graveyard deck, I suspect, in here. But we'll see. Kelden Marauders, got Vanishing, Mog War Marshal. So, go so there's some, you know, obviously we're at Common, we're seeing quite a few of the sort of classic goblin stuff. So, you know, for like a fast mono red deck is probably possible here um not just specifically goblins although we've got we do have echo here so that could slow us down that's the only thing yeah unless we're quite happy to for stuff to get blown up which we'll talk about probably at the end as you can probably see a pattern here to that be you know if we consider the black spells we've we've already seen and morbid so yeah right oh chain lightning's in here wow okay when was that yeah that's right that's was in pds that um premium was in online vintage masters which i believe i did draft actually yeah i did did draft vintage masters badly um, and it's in internal masters, but you know, between that, I mean, you know, legends, and then apart from some online stuff, you get it in the premium deck. And so this was the first, what in paper, you know, booster set for it to come up in. Interesting card in your you know your your mono red burn deck back in the day so that's cool and pyroblast price of progress well wow. young pyromancer oh look another shrine yeah here's our wee dragonaut so mm. whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell blood braid elf is in here with cascade so I think we know what red green's going to end up as. But beetle back chief red. Yeah, there's more goblins. Wow, red white. Kelden champion, tooth and claw, battle squadron, triumph of souls. Return up to one target creature card from a graveyard to the battlefield. If black was spent to cast triumph of souls, creature target player controls get plus two plus zero and gain haste until end of turn. If red was spent to cast Titan of Souls. What was that like on the original? Oh, that was a Shadow Moor card. Okay. Wow. Three, one. Red Beast Carnival. Beast creature token named Carnival. Okay, yeah. Uh, I think we know what Black Red's going to be, don't we? Let's look here. So we've already seen Dak. Gamble's here. Jewel Caster is in here. Goblin Trenches. Mm. Yeah, tokens, of course. 
giant swordfish. Trample how haste and shroud. It's a four one for four. And hybrid. Sulfuric vortex. Sneak sneak attack. Siege gang commander. Void, which we've seen. Crater Helion. What was that from that I Oh, it, that's why I recognise it, because it was in Vintage Masters. Okay. Okay, call the Skybreaker. M Maelstrom Wanderers in here. So probably a number of cards you know, slid in here for relevance to Commander. But also, there's a little bit of Cascade going on here. Um, yeah, missing a few cards with that. So, when we've now completed like our, our look through red. Um, so, what, what do we what do we get from that? So, yeah, black red sacrifice morbid, definitely. Um, the red white one that's tokens go wide. Um, so yeah, so a sort of aggro tokens deck. We've seen quite a few of those. We saw you know, several white tokens, a lot of no, red tokens. So yeah, black, red, red, white. Oh, and red, blue. Yeah, so spells, but spells from the graveyard. So flashback we saw. I, I don't know. Have I seen any retrace yet? Um, yeah. Maybe. Okay, now moving into green. So, of undergrowth, fog, and war elves, nature's claim, nimble mongoose. So, some interesting one drops. Um, seal of strength, commune with the cards. Moving on to two drops at common. So, some elves going on here. Silver might more flashback. Reach and Death Touch, Weir Bears in here, Civic Wayfinder. So, of course, we also keep an eye open for our our ramp spells. Um, so, yeah, Red Green, I think, is where our, our aggro is. Which, again, surprise, surprise. Sentinel Spider, 4-4. Four, four. It was nice to have a spider in here. Sylvan Might. Okay, moving on. Ah, Rancor. Oh, well. <laughs> there you go. Mirwood Symbiote. Flint of Boar, which is green-red. Gaia's Blessing. Okay, yeah. That's our grave stuff, graveyard stuff. For uh, for what would that be? Um, I'm trying to think here, actually. Mm. Oh no, yeah, no, it just puts itself back, doesn't it? Yeah, that's it, sorry. Ancestral Mask is in here. Armadillo Cloak, which I already mentioned. We've seen Invigorate, Shaman of the Pack, Trigon Predator, Blood Ray of Elves. And we can hear, see here, they've sort of nicely sprinkled the two colour stuff without going overboard. So that's nice. And we've got Harmonise as well. There's our our green shrine spell and then we have a roar of the worm with flashback on it okay and of course if we can get that into our graveyard um are there ways in here beyond casting it from flashback of i mean three in a green <laughs> as opposed to two in a green was pretty good but i don't know did i well actually yeah that there's other ways of getting stuff out of a graveyard. I'm more thinking of ways of getting stuff into a graveyard beyond just either discarding it or through combat damage or blowing it up yourself, I suppose. To then cheat it out somehow. Right. Well, we already saw Death Rate Shaman, Green, Green Sun Zenith is here, Heritage Druid. So these are our rares and mythics. Enchantress, okay, yeah. You probably already guessed the um, 
what colours the you know the enchantments is in. Natural order, Rivlos Roga, mental regal force, and Maelstrom Wanderer, which you've already seen. Yep, Kazabat Green. So again, you know, you could with a combination of cards here, and again, depending on what you drafted, you could probably work out some sort of quite nice mono green deck if you felt so inclined. So, in terms of what I said to the to the uh, limited archetype mix with the addition of green so yeah red green fast grade fast fast grade fast aggro green white yes indeed is enchantments black green i think i mentioned elves and there's a, a green blue threshold so just to go back through the whole list again so white blue was skies blue black reanimator Black, red, sacrifice, stroke, morbid. Uh, red, green, fast, aggro. Green, white, enchantments. White, black, recursion with ETB effects. Blue, red, spells from the graveyard with flashback. Retrace it has here. Um, black, green, elves. Green, white, tokens go wide. Sorry, green, white. Red, white, tokens go wide. Yep, so that's red, white, tokens go wide. And then green, blue, threshold. So we saw several cards that sort of cared about stuff in your graveyard. So again, you can mash up um, some of the colours here. So, you know, it's probably a pretty cool blue, black, um, blue, black, green deck in here. Um, and uh, some other things as well. So I'm just looking red, white is tokens go wide what would that work nice with mm. see black red I said black red green didn't I yeah there's also some recursion white black anyway stuff to think about okay so zero car um zero color stuff yeah, in this case, artifact is one of them. Stop to at, at common. So one common um, card where there has no colour in the casting cost. Then moving on to uncommons, we get nine at uncommon. Same sort of thing. These are all, uh, you know, colourless in the casting cost. But various ones here add in utility that's going to help us with you know, all the different colours. So we've got Relic, Millikin, um, for sort of self-mill. So that's going to help out where we want stuff in the graveyard. Um, also, we get a colourless mana, mana boost there. We've got Prismatic Lens, which we can use to filter colours of other um, mana or just generate colourless mana. We've got Ashenod's Alter, Alter, Alter. It's a sack outlet. It generates mana, um, albeit colourless mana. We have um, Ticking Gnomes, which is uh, another um, sack outlet. Or, yeah, no, sorry, a sacrifice. I always get confused whether the correct term is sacrifice outlet or not. I think that's more, isn't it? Sack outlet is more where, you're, where, you, sac where you target it and it, it has a benefit rather than... So this is more the self-sacrifice, <laughs> the self-sacrifice outlet, um, where you sacrifice it and you get something back. Um, worn Power Stone, yeah, more. So lots of ways of generating color, um, yeah, colorless mana here. Card draw, we've got Dragonaut, and we've got Minus Automaton playing around with counters. Interesting, what counters can we play around with? Plus one. Plus one, uh, but only on it, a few, okay. And then rares or mythics, same sort of thing. So we've got Chromox, Mana Crypt, Senseless, Divining Top, Top, Isochron, Scepter, Winter Orb, Goblin Char Belchers in here. So there's a Char Belcher deck if you felt so inclined. Um, yeah. Never... Nevinarals disc, so another way of um, blowing stuff up. 
if you don't have access to uh, white, you know, it's a wrath effect and duplicant with imprint. Target non token creature. Hmm. Okay, there's a cycle of pit fighters in here, <laughs> firstly. So, Jareth, Arcanus, Visara, the Dreadful, uh, Rorik, is that? Yeah, Rorik's the Blade Wing, and Silvos, Rogue Elemental, is another one. Uh, let me just get my oops, cycles list up, help me out a little bit here. There's not many. So, yeah, powerful religion creature cards, they cost three. Oh, there you go, three and three M. So three of a certain colour. And they're reprinted from Onslaught. So originally these are really in slot. slot. Yes, indeed, there are also, as you've seen, a cycle of Honden. So these were the uncommon legendary shrine enchantments that grants the owners something depending on the number of shrines they control. Reprinted from Champions of Kamigawa. And yes, there were a cycle of tutors. So Enlightened Tutor, Mystical Vampire, but then Gamble and Green Sun Zeniths. Um, now it's controlled as search library for a card, albeit with certain conditions. Four of them were part of a mega cycle printed in Mirage Visions and Urza Saga. Worldly Tutor has been replaced by Green Sun Zenith from Mirrodin Besieged. Right. And yeah, you probably saw it already when we just scrolled through at the start. Um, yeah, 10 of these life gain tap lands at common. So pretty handy. I'm sure we've seen other sets. They didn't do it here, but it we're probably familiar with other sets where there were two color, maybe slightly different tap lands um, that were two color, which actually had their own slot. I think they did that for one of the Return to Return Ravnica sets, didn't they? Where they definitely wanted to make sure you had access to um, mana fixing. They they put them in the, the actual land slot, the basic land slot. But this, as we've said, had no basic land slot. So these were just mixed in with the commons. I don't know if they changed the distribution slightly with the print sheet or not for commons for these. So you would get slightly you know, more than usual. Not even sure if that's a thing or not, actually. Um, Hydra Blast and Pyroblast were, are the mirrored pair. So there's the, the blue one that targets red, and then there's the red one that targets blue. Okay, here's our legend, legendaries, both um, creatures, enchantments, and planeswalkers, and anything else. So quite a few in here are going to be those Honden, but we've got three in white, so two creatures and a Honden, three in blue, a creature, a Honden, and a planeswalker, three in black, two creatures and a Honden, two in red, so the Honden, and then uh, Rorix, Blade Wing, and then two in green, Honden and Silvos. And then some multicolored ones. So Brago, Dak Faden, which is a planeswalker, Maelstrom Wanderer, but also we've got Caracas in here, which is a legendary land. Return to the legendary creature to its owner's hand. Um, the other thing as well you probably noticed is of course one of these is also the Pit Fighter as well. So in each colour at legendary, at the very least, you have a pit fighter and a hoden and any colors which have an additional one a care of something else that isn't one of those two so you can see where is it in yeah in white it's eight and a half tails uh, in blue it's jace in black it'll be braids because visara is the pit fighter Nothing in red, just a bit far from the Honden, and nothing extra in red again, just the Honden and the Pit Fighter. So, yeah. Okay, here's our mythic specifically. So, balance, force of will. 
So one in white, two in blue, two in black, we've got Necropotence and Vampiric Tutor, two in red, Sneak Attack and World Gorgia Dragon, two in green, so Argothian Enchantress and Natural Order. So only white have we got a single one. And then we've got Dak Faden, Sphinx of the Steel Wind, Maelstrom Wanderer, Chrome Mox was a mythic, so was Mana Crypt, and also as we've seen Karak, because I mean we've seen these all already, but again it's quite nice to see you know what was printed at Legend Legendary. Okay, so price wise <laughs> yeah. So Mana Crypt, Chrome Mox, yeah, we've got stuff over a hundred bucks here. I'm gonna loop back round in a moment and look at some other stuff as well, but I just wanted to do this now. Um seeing as we were just talking about or looking at mythics. So yeah, then then there's a sudden sort of drop. So a lot of our mythics are up there. There's wasteland in the set as well, so we'll have a look at some other land. Um, since those divining top you saw a lot of these as you can see are actually banned in some of the eternal formats not all of them but you got a few here and there but yeah the price is still staying up sylvan libraries in here winter all we mentioned so probably quite a while before we're going to get below ten dollars just because of the nature of the card oh, this one's not actually banned in anything that's online, isn't it? So, it's Oathbreaker and Brawl. Right. Beleaguering Commander. Okay, well. Oh, there we go. 13. Necropotence. No, still just above. Dak. Oh, green. Sun Zenus holding in there. So, in tune, we drop below. So, we haven't quite got off the first page yet. Okay. All right, commander stuff. Um, and again, remember, if you see any um, legendaries, um, it, it's inclusion in all the decks on EDH rec, including ones where they're not the commander. So short swords to plowshares, top of the list. Then we've got counterspell, brainstorm. Yeah, I think in a set like this, yeah, pretty obvious what what's going to bubble up based on what we've seen so you know a lot of the tutoring stuff yeah <laughs> and some of the more extreme um removal yeah more tutors fixing sylvan library yeah i was in commanders last night actually I think I had this in a somewhat online deck. It's quite interesting to play around with, actually. Really, um, these are these cards where you have to play around with them a bit, a little bit, to just get the feel of when's when's a good time or how, yeah, how is how it's best used. Used. Oh, since I, blood artist, right. Yep, yeah, so specifically the legends here. So again, just a reminder that it's across all decks, regardless of whether they're the commander or not. Brago, Maelstrom, Arcanus, Arcanus, how do you say that? Eight and a half tails, um, Jareth, Viscera, Silvos. Rorix, Braids, well, it is banned in Commander, so <laughs> no surprise there. I did make Modern Horizons 2 as well. Okay, so yeah, the, the, um, the multicolored stuff. So 23 cards in the set are actually multicolored. Out of that, so out of that 23, two are more than two colours. So 21 
the two colour cards in some form. And then, now that's in the casting cost. If we look at um, the colour identity, then we might see that widened a little bit. So let's do that. So if I replace this with an identity greater than two. So this is going to factor, factor in things like, you know, cards where the flashback cost is a different colour to the casting cost. So now we've got 37 instead of, what was it, 23. Um, and then if we do this, we've still only got two. So if you were curious about that. Now one thing which was conspicuous in, in its absence, um, which is unusual for me, I didn't. Maybe I was so disappointed by there not being basic lands. Well, actually, yeah, what I should have done is I think if we take out the... So we originally search for that. Okay, so if I now do this... Yeah, that's why I forgot to do the flip. That's why. Should have done that. Yeah, forgot this bit. So these are the only other lands. I went through the two colour ones. So Caracas, which we've seen already... Um, or was easy to spot because I went through the legends. I um, also we got Maze of Eth in here, Misha's Factory, and Wasteland. And uh, Misha's is uh, uncommon. These are uh, rare, and then this is the mythic. So everything else, all the other ten, are all the uncommon things. So there we have it. I really enjoyed that. That was good to look through. It was a it's a fun uh, fun set to to go through because I've not been through it since well when it was released I think I probably bought possibly three packs in paper you know, you know three boosters maybe only even one because uh, it was probably pretty pricey at the time so yeah I look forward to next week and another Masters type uh, set which isn't Modern Masters I don't think and isn't obviously Eternal Masters because we've just done that so thanks once again for watching bye for now and I will catch you in a future episode